what's up guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now you're tuning in today because you want to learn coding, right? You want to learn easy projects that you can start out with as a beginner or an intermediate coder. You've come to the right place because today I'm going to show you how to create a Mad Libs app in C Sharp. So without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. Now wait right there. If you want to be an amazing person and support the channel, go ahead and click that big red button down below. All right guys, here we are at the computer. You guys want to learn Mad Libs in C Sharp today. I'm going to show you how to make a simple Madlib program, um, and it's just going to be a really nice beginner project for all of you guys. So, um, first of all, we need to understand what Madlibs are, or give you a little quick reminder in case you uh, happen to forget. So here we are. We have, if we just look up Madlibs on Google, um, obviously this funny face. You you might have seen this as a kid, but basically Madlibs are just sentences, and you get to fill them in, and it's kind of like a whole game. You you know you pick adjectives, nouns, whatever it is. And then you fill in the blanks, and sometimes it's funny, and it's just kind of fun to see what, what you come up with. So that is what we're building today, stuff like this, you know, just, just blank sentences, and, and we're going to prompt the user for, let's say, five. Let's say five words. Um, some of them can be adjectives or nouns or whatever. And, uh, yeah, let's just see how it goes. Open up regular Visual Studio. Make sure you have the C-sharp package installed, um, you know, the .NET framework and all that stuff. Um, we are going to create a new project, and we want to use the Windows Forms app, and that's just going to be able to uh, that's going to let us easily create um, Windows apps and and you know drag and drop stuff on the screen rather than individually calling it out in the code. So I'll go ahead and select that, click next, and we can call it whatever the heck we want. I'm going to call mine Mad Libs. So let's go ahead and click create and just see what happens. All right, guys, we have our project loaded. Here we are, we have a blank form. So let's uh, spice it up a little bit and just create a nice, simple interface for us to work with. Um, first of all, we wanna get rid of this boring white, right? And let's just make it something fun. So we we'll to choose whatever color we want. We wanna make sure to edit this back color property. We can choose from all these colors. I'm gonna go ahead and go with this nice, like light cyan blue or something like that. Um, yeah, we like that. Um, and next, you want to double click on the form. That way it opens up the code in the back end. And mine's super zoomed in right now. I'm sorry. Let me just zoom out a little bit. All right. So when you do that, you're going to create this Ford or form one load uh, method. We actually don't want that. So go ahead and just remove that real quick. And you can click this little lightning symbol and backspace on the load method. And that will actually automatically erase it from the back end. As you see, it is now gone. So we have our form. Um, make sure to just kind of click on the top of the form, and that will open up the properties for all or all the properties for the form. So instead of form one, the name that we see at the top left here, we're gonna call it Mad Libs because that's the title of our app. Oh, I forgot it's it's not valid because there's a space in it. So we're gonna call it Mad Libs without any spaces. So Mad Libs is what we called it, and it looks like it's thinking here. Okay, and then uh, we are going to want to change the text from Form 1 to Mad Libs as well. Okay, as you see, it changed up in the corner there. And uh, yeah, let's continue to design the interface. So we can kind of size this up how we want. And we're going to set the size here. And exactly how it appears on your monitor here is the official size that you will see when you run the app. So for example, if I run it right now, we'll go ahead and see that this exact same size window shows up here on my screen. Now that I've chosen the size that I want to set for my app, we're gonna go in the bottom right here, and then you wanna find the thing that says form border style. Right now it's set to sizable, and that means that when the user launches the app, they could size it to whatever size they want. I actually have a video on this, and go ahead and, and watch that if you like. But we're gonna just change this from sizable to fixed single. And what that's gonna do is just let us not, or let the user not even be able to size the app and whatever we set it at is, is, is what they're gonna have to deal with for the size. And we like that because it just makes a lot of things simpler. So now that we have that out of the way, um, let's go ahead and add some stuff to our form. So let's drag a label on here and we need to instantly change the properties, a couple properties about it. So we wanna find where it says auto size and right here, right now it's set to true, we want to set it to false. And you'll notice that the, in, the label instantly begins to, or now it lets you size it. And that's awesome. So we want to size it to whatever we want. 
and I'm going to pick like something like this. And I'm going to kind of put it up in the middle here. Um, we also want to change the uh, text that it says in there from label one to, you know, a little welcome statement or something. So like, I'm going to say, welcome to Mad Libs with a smiley face. Just to kind of greet our user. Okay. And then um, this font is super boring. So <laughs> we want to change that up a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, let's pick out something here that looks kind of cool. Um, what does this look like? Well, I want to bump it up to size, maybe like 24. Welcome to Mad Libs. Sure, that looks that looks good enough. And you'll notice it's also left aligned, the text. And we're going to fix that right now. So you want to find uh, where it says text align down here. And it says top left. Click the little drop box and you can have all these boxes to select from. Ours is going to be the top middle because that looks nice. So we're going to just kind of center that. And now what we have is a nice little welcome statement and a fresh background with a cool little text here. Okay, so the next thing that we want is we want to prompt the user for, you know, nouns and adjectives, correct? So we're going to need a few text fields, some labels for those fields, and a button that when they click the button, it instantly takes all the inputs from the fields. And it's like, okay, we have this input. Let's move it over to the back end and do some fun magic and then spit out a Mad Lib. So in order to do any of that at all, we need to go ahead and find the text box. So here's the text box and let's drag it on the field. And another thing that we want to do here is uh, you'll see you can only size it uh, horizontally. We want to do it vertically because, you know, maybe we want to tell our uh, text box in this. Or maybe the user happens to put in a lot of text, which we also can limit, by the way. But for now, uh, we're going to find this multi-line property in the bottom right. And we're going to change that from false to true. And that will now let us size it however we want. So I'm going to pick a nice nice looking size kind of like this and I'm gonna just drop it up here and then what I want to do is now get a label and once we have this label we're just gonna copy five of these and make our lives easier so you kind of just want to initially set up the settings that you want and then go ahead and copy stuff and the cool smart thing about Visual Studio is it will automatically increment the uh, the names of the 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 text boxes. So if this one, for example, this text box here, it's called text box one. Um, when we copy and paste another one, it's called text box two automatically. So that's, that's, I find that pretty cool. So find this label here and we want to uh, make sure it's top left. I accidentally changed that. Um, then we're going to go and find the auto size property. Once again, put that to false. That way we can size it however we like. And I want to make it on par with the text field. And we did, so let's just kind of do that here. Just make sure it has the exact same height and stuff. And then kind of just drag it out here so it looks uh, about the same. So this is label two. And we want to change the actual text in it. So let's figure out what we want first. For the Mad Lib that I have set up for today's tutorial, I want to prompt for two adjectives, two nouns, and a plural noun. And we're going to start with the two adjectives. So in order to get an adjective out of the user, we want to formulate a sentence that, uh, you know, uh, implies that they should put an adjective there, correct? So we want to have a descriptor of some sort. So what we're going to do is go ahead and, and change the text here to say uh, something that implies an adjective. So I'm going to say, like, that is so. So whenever the user reads it, they're like, that is so what? Cool? smelly lame <laughs> you know you guys get the point so that is so whatever now we have that and let's change up the text here because we're going to be copying this over so i like rockwell text personally rockwell bold and i like the size i don't know like 14 or something so that is so you know whatever and you can make it longer you can use a different sense you guys can change whatever you want about this that you see I'm just show, showing you guys how to create this the uh, simplest way that I can think of. So now that we have our two fields, we want to copy them both. And you could hold shift to select more than one item at a time. Go ahead and click control C and then control V. And that will instantly paste another field here. 
And then just keep doing that until you have five. Okay, so now we have five text fields, but we all have the same sentence. So we want to hurry up and formulate other sentences to squeeze out other adjectives, nouns, plural nouns, whatever, out of the user. So I'm going to change this from that is so to another thing that will give me an adjective. So I'm going to say that looks really. So they, once again, they could say that looks really cool or lame or <laughs> smelly, just like I said earlier. Okay, so one problem that we just ran into is it's it's too big for the to fit that in the the text field. So instead of trying to move everything around, what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and, and just highlight all these and just change the text size once and for all. So instead of 14, let's go down to 12. And now you'll notice that that looks really now fits inside of here. So that's cool. Now we need two more, or we need two nouns next. So I need sentences that will uh, imply that. So instead of that is so, I'm going to say, I'm going to the. So whenever they read this, like, okay, I'm going to the park, I'm going to the post office, whatever. Uh, we need something else that's going to get us another noun. And by the way, I'm just kind of making these up on the fly. You guys can just literally go to Google and copy a Mad Lib directly if you'd like to, to make it make life easier. But yeah, like I said, I'm just kind of do, doing this on the fly. Um, so let's say I have to get my, they might say like keys, wallet, phone, whatever. And then the last thing we need is a plural noun. So for this, I'm going to say there are multiple because whatever the answer, I want it to imply that there's multiple of that, right? There's multiple wallets, multiple doors, whatever the answer. Okay, so finally, we have the button. We need the button. So let's go up here in our toolbox, select the button, drag it onto the screen. And the nice thing about button, it is already, or it already is auto sizable. So you don't have to change any sort of fancy field. I'm just gonna make it the entire width of the form because I kind of feel like that looks nice. Um, instead of button one, we're gonna say submit. And you can say whatever you want, obviously, but I'm just going to stick with that. And we're going to go down to Rockwell here once again, because I like to match things. And we're just going to bump it up to, let's say, size 18. So we're going to have a nice submit button here. And what we just need to do is let's change up the background color to, mm, let's say, white. Okay, so now it matches the text fields. So we have uh, a nice looking form. Let's go ahead and save our project and then just run it just to make sure, you know, all the formatting stuff looks right. So it does, you know, you'll notice we can enter into these uh, text fields here and click submit, but nothing happens. And that's okay. All the behind the scenes stuff and, and various uh, attributes that go on in the background are all going to be in part two of this tutorial. This was simply setting up the interface. Please tune in for part two of this tutorial on how to make a Mad Lib. Thank you guys for tuning in today. I really uh, appreciate the support on the channel. If you like content like this, please give this a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel, comment down below any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. And uh, yeah, with that said, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.